So just to start out, as I said, a review of the masonry shear wall types. These are given in section 118.4 of the 2011 code. There's four, or excuse me, five shear wall types. We'll be uh, focusing only on three of them. There are some unreinforced shear walls, both plain and so-called detailed plane, ordinary plane and detailed plane. The detailed plane has some prescriptive reinforcement, but that is not counted on for the design. Just the masonry, the unreinforced masonry itself is counted on for design. We'll not be covering those. I can uh, tell you in 10 seconds how to design that. It's basically P over A plus MC over I and the allowable flexural tension stress controls. What we'll look at is reinforced masonry shear walls. So there's an ordinary reinforced masonry shear wall that can be used in design categories A, B, and C. It has prescriptive reinforcement as given above. We'll look at a drawing and show what that is. There's an intermediate reinforced shear wall, which the prescriptive reinforcement is almost the same as that for an ordinary, a little closer vertical reinforcement spacing. And then there's a special reinforced shear wall, which in terms of reinforcement has a significant amount of um, prescriptive reinforcement. And there's also a few other requirements that we'll look at for special reinforced shear walls as we go through this. Uh, the special shear reinforced shear wall can be used in any seismic design category. In fact, is the only shear wall that can be used in seismic design category D or higher. So here's the reinforcement. The prescriptive reinforcement for an ordinary shear wall is given in uh, section 118.3231. The blue lines here are reinforcement of at least 0.2 square inches. Obviously, typically a number four bar or greater. Um, needs to be within 16 inches of the top of the wall. Horizontal reinforcement at any structurally connected floor or roof levels, any diaphragm. There's horizontal reinforcement above and below window openings. It has to extend at least 40 bar diameters at 24 inches. There's horizontal reinforcement, either joint reinforcement at 16 inches on center, or bond beams at 10 feet. For vertical reinforcement, we need it within 8 inches of any control joint, within 8 inches of corners and end walls, and then on either side of openings also and then within uh, or every 10 feet if we have a, um, a long wall there, solid wall portion, we need mason or reinforcement at every 10 feet. The only difference between the ordinary wall and the intermediate wall in terms of prescri prescriptive reinforcement is that this is reduced uh, to 4 feet um, for the intermediate wall. One thing that this uh, Prescriptive reinforcement can be met by structural reinforcement. So, for example, if if you were designing the lintel above this window opening and you needed a number five bar, a number six bar, that also satisfies the prescriptive seismic reinforcement requirements. You don't have to put in additional reinforcement to meet that. The uh, special reinforced shear wall. Then there's some limitations on the maximum spacing, one-third the length of the wall, one-third the height of the wall, 48 inches for a running bond, 24 inches for not laid in running bond is the maximum spacing of vertical reinforcement. Similar requirements for maximum spacing of horizontal reinforcement required to resist shear. So if you didn't need any uh, reinforcement to resist shear, the masonry could carry the shear. These spacings don't apply but you still have then the requirement there. The total reinforcement ratio of vertical and horizontal has to be greater than 0.002.2%. And in either direction, it has to be greater than 0.0007. And we also have the requirement that shear reinforcing has to be anchored around vertical bars with a standard hook. We've had a lot of discussions in the code committee as to in terms of whether this is just reinforcement required for a shear or all prescriptive reinforcement. Variety of opinions on that. I lean towards that all horizontal bars should have a hook, but that is admittedly not clear in the code. 
There's also in seismic design category D then some material requirements that type S or type N cement lime mortar. The mortar cement mortar is the only mortar allowed to be used. There is an exception to that that will be in the 2013 or that is in the 2013 code that masonry cement mortar is permitted for fully grouted members.